Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another video series around the identity manager and in this video series I like to show you something about one identity manager permissions. This video series is planned since a couple of months and the reason for that is that a lot of people just talk to me and tell me oh what identity manager permissions this is something that looks like really complicated can we avoid to use that. Some other people just implement something and then they open some cases in our communities and ask us, hey, I was developing really cool stuff. Unfortunately, I cannot see it. What's the matter? And the reason for that is, of course, there are no permissions to use it. Because of that, permissions are super important and we have to consider these permissions in absolutely each project. This means even in small projects where only a few admin people just working with the identity manager, you need the particular permissions. In the same way that in huge projects where a lot of different user groups are using different front ends and need different permission situations to ensure that nobody is allowed to do more than he should do. Additionally to that, and to say that crystal clear, in Identity Manager, every object you develop and you customize or you create is typically considered somewhere in permissions. That means our permission model goes down to the API level. To get that all briefly described, we will just split that video series into three parts. In part number one, we will talk about the authentication modules. Authentication modules are there to get connected to the One Identity Manager. In part number two of the series, we will talk about identity manager permissions and entitlements, and I will show you what exists. In part number three, we will take one identity manager installation and secure them as good as possible. I am absolutely sure if you watch this series carefully at the end of the video series, a lot of things gets crystal clear. And the last questions, if there are some left, could be asked somewhere in our communities where we will answer them like every day. And now have fun and follow me through the screen and we start with our series. Working with an identity management system like Identity Manager, we typically deal with target system permissions and resources. We handle them in business roles or system roles and handle them with the help of organizations. At the end, what we will do in an identity management system is we assign all of these entitlements to our identities. In this video series, I don't like to talk about the left side that means to handle the target system permissions. In this video, I like to talk about all the permissions we have in Identity Manager to handle Identity Manager permissions. We have there as well system users, permission groups and application roles and a lot of other permissions we can use to manage the particular permissions in Identity Manager to be allowed to do something. Before we really start, we should answer the question why we have our own permission management and why we don't use the permission management of the Microsoft SQL Server, for example. The answer is pretty easy. Uh, the Microsoft SQL Server permission management, it's a very good permission management if you only want to work with databases, but at the end for identity management, it is not sufficient enough. Standardly, Microsoft SQL Server goes with the permissions down to the object level. That means on the level of a table, I can define, read and update and delete permissions. Uh, but unfortunately, in Identity Manager, we need them down to the property level. That means not only for the table, even for the columns, I need a specific permission set. Additionally to that, it is important as well to define permission sets for a subset of data that means from for example for the person table I like to define a subset of data for example all people starting the last name with A down to starting the last name with E and with that uh, I want to have write permissions and for all the others there should be read permissions and so on. Why we use our own permission management and why we don't use uh, the Microsoft SQL Server permission management there it's pretty easy. Application roles is a feature that does, did only exist for the Microsoft SQL Server. It will not exist for the Oracle Server we support as well. And so we decided years ago, before Microsoft, by the way, started with these application roles, just to implement our own permission management. This is all discussed to the table and property level. And now let's talk about some other stuff, which is as well not considered by Microsoft. And this is the complete object API. You want to have different permissions for reports, you want to have them for different forms, you want to have different permissions for specific 
objects and actions like uh, functions and procedures and whatever, all of that should be as well considered in permissions. And if you want to do so, the SQL Server cannot support you at all. Therefore, you need your specific permission management. We already have implemented in the Identity Manager and this is what we will show you. The slide shows on the one hand side the SQL Server permission management like it exists and on the other hand side what we need and you can easily see uh, Microsoft and as well Oracle, it's not able just to help us with all of this. Last but not least the question, can we avoid the platform management? That means can we avoid the platform security from the SQL Server? And of course we cannot. The reason for that is you have to connect to a database. This is what a database specialist calls the connection string. The connection string typically, if it is a Microsoft SQL Server, holds something like the server, the database name, the username, a password and some other parameters. Whatever. This connection string is necessary and that includes as well the SQL Server user we use typically to connect to the database. And here we talk about something other else that might confuse you a little bit at the beginning. You might have heard in one of the SQL Server trainings that standard database users are not something you should use. You should always use Windows authorized authentication. That means a Windows account, an Active Directory account that just have permissions in the database. This for the Identity Manager, it's exactly the wrong way to authenticate users. The reason for that is pretty easy. For a Windows based authentication, your, that means your user SQL account, needs access on the database. To do so, you can just integrate that into the Microsoft SQL Server's configuration and you can permit this person on the database. Typically, we need a lot of writing permissions in the database because we want to create roles and want to insert IT shop requests and reports and whatever. That means all these people with their standard user accounts will have access to our database. Wonderful! It's easy because they have the work to do. Unfortunately, they do have the same permissions as well with even every other front end who is able to connect the database. For example, a spreadsheet like Microsoft Excel can just use your Windows account to access the One Identity Manager database and because of the right permissions, you can as well change data if you like to do so. You can as well open a SQL Studio on your machine and can start to edit our data just completely bypassing our complete security. That means that is not something we want to use. For that, we use a specific SQL user. We, we typically encrypt all of these credentials and allow then all the connections who need that SQL user to connect to the database. This is not really a problem, especially because the complete login and the complete permission set you typically get is something you get from your One Identity Manager login and from the security there instead of from the platform login. The only last question typically people have is, is it then a little bit more complicated to trace traffic, for example, using a profiler tool, a SQL profiler tool? Yes, of course it is. Not really, especially because different workstations will have different IP addresses, but the complete profiling for the database with a profiler tool, with a platform profiler tool, it's something you typically not use, especially because SQL tracing, for example, it's part of the standard One Identity Manager login and you can do it with One Identity Manager tools and there it is easy to figure out who was just modifying something. To bypass the platform security is something you can easily do. And only if you just implement something on your own, what we did in the past. That means the good old sentence from Microsoft, use always an Active Directory authenticated user to connect to your database, it's already correct but only if you hear the second part of the sentence that says if you use the Microsoft SQL Server platform security. We don't do that and because of that we don't need that and this all together it's the reason why we implemented our own permission management. And the very last but not least scenario for all the people who cannot live without Windows user is to use a Windows user for that specific connection string. If you try to do so, the best guess is to use the application server technology of the identity manager because the application server, it's an IIS instance somewhere hosted on a server. And this IIS instance can run with a specific system account Windows user. This Windows user could then be permitted on the One Identity Manager database. And uh, on the workstation where the user is locked in with his own credentials, which are not part of the permissions who can access the database, 
can open a One Identity Measure front-end and connect this to the application server. This is safe as well. It is using a Windows service account on the application server side. It is just prohibiting that the user can use other tools to connect to the One Identity Manager database. The only thing to know is that the One Identity Manager application server could not be used with every One Identity Manager frontend. For example, JobQ info could not be opened using an application server.